So welcome everyone to session two of Club Project 2020. Um, if you don't know what Club Project 2020 is, it's actually a community or group um, project that we're gonna step through over the course of the year 2020. So the idea is that every year we're gonna have a new project that we'll work on uh, focused on a different uh, technology that we can work on together as a community, make decisions together as a community, and, uh, and hopefully everybody at their own location, wherever that may be, at home, at your after school program, at school, you'll be able to create your very own project there uh, by purchasing materials and or creating uh, the digital product that we may choose to make, uh, depending on what year it is. So the goal is that every year it'll be a different project. And so for this year, session one was about uh, really announcing what we were going to work on as a community. Um, and I'll go over that a little bit here in case you missed it, uh, just as a review so that we're all on the same page moving forward. OK, um, so today is session two um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into what session two focuses on after we do our quick little review. So I'm going to pull up the um, PowerPoint here and so and we'll step through it. Um, I want to make it as interactive as possible. So uh, if you want to leave any questions on the side there um, and, uh, and, and, at, and whenever we have an opportunity, I'll also bring some people up and have you guys uh, either with your voice or video and participate with me in the uh, class. OK, so let's go here. All right. So um, I'm assuming you can see that. Uh, let me pull over my iPad here so I can step through. OK, so today's session is called Let's Imagine. All right. So we're going to imagine uh, really imagine is really the second step uh, or actually the third step of the uh, engineering design process. OK, so um, our project here's a review for 2020 is a DIY Sphero robot. So if you're not familiar with the Sphero robot, uh, it's really like a round robot um, or a ball robot. If you if you've seen Star Wars uh, and you know who BB-8 is, then uh, BB-8 is actually uh, a uh, a real life version of. Uh, let me change my point here. A real life version of the Sphero Sphero robot or a bigger version, right? So uh, if you've seen the movie, then you know how BB-8 moves around. It's essentially a, uh, it's like a hamster in a ball. If you've ever seen a hamster ride around or move around in a ball, then you can get a, a, an idea visually of how BB-8 moves around, okay? Um, here, over here on the left is actually what a Sphero robot looks like in an exploded view. So if we were to take that uh, Sphero robot, blow it up uh, so that you can see all the parts and pieces, this is what it would look like, okay? And you can see the shell here, the internal electronics, uh, that looks like a motor, some wheels, okay, some up, some wheels here at the top, and that's probably to keep it centered here in a ball, um, but very similar to what you would see here with uh, BB-8, okay? Uh, so the Sphero robot is a machine, well, any robot is a machine with a programmable brain that can move a physical body. So we say a robot has to have all of those three things. And I'll step through this pretty quickly because it's simply a review. So how are we gonna go about uh, stepping through our Club Project 2020 for the year? So we're gonna use the engineering design process, okay, as a guide. So the engineering design process is an iter iter iterative process, excuse me, uh, meaning that we're gonna go through it uh, like a cycle every time uh, several periods, okay? So, so that means if you look at it here, it's, you start with ask, then you go to imagine, plan, create and improve. And you can see the arrow here. It brings you right back around to ask. OK, so you go through this process continuously to make a better and better product. OK, and if you look over here, we have um, what those uh, steps of the engineering design process really mean. So for the ask, we're talking about requirements. Uh, what does our product need to accomplish? Imagine where this is when we get into the brainstorming. What should we build? to meet our requirements, then the plan, uh, draw, design, create is where we actually build and put together our prototype or our first version. And then the improve piece, this is where you actually go back through this entire process. How can you make things better? Um, if we're thinking about 
like the iPhone and over the years, how it's gone through this process. Maybe the next version, you'll have a better camera, um, you know, different apps that you can apply, uh, smaller form factor, thinner, lighter, all these things. Um, and this is how the iPhone, the creators of the iPhone actually go through that process, the engineering design process. So today we're going to focus on the imagined piece. OK, the, this is where we're going to kind of do some brainstorming and see how we can uh, what ideas we can come up with on how to make our own DIY Sphero robot from scratch. OK, so here again, here's the imagine piece. OK, so the what do we need to imagine? OK, we need to imagine because we're building a robot. Again, these three parts that it has to have a machine, a programmable brain and a physical body. So we need to figure out how do we get these parts and pieces or what should we use? Should our should our machine have motors or sensors? Right. Um, do we need a microcontroller, which is uh, a form of a brain? Um, how, how can we program it? Should it be simple or complex? And then, then we get down into choosing items or materials for the physical body part. Should it be metal? How big should it be? Should it be heavy? These are all considerations we need to think about when we're going uh, through the imagine step of the engineering design process, okay? Now, these will be specific to uh, what we're trying to build, which is a Sphero ball, okay, or a robot ball, okay? So I actually did this process with my daughters uh, over the weekend. And here's an example of some of the things that we came up with, okay? So I sat down with them and uh, we stepped through uh, some ideas and I, I pulled up a couple things on the computer. And this is where that kind of comes into play, the research piece. And we kind of looked around uh, and based on what we want to build, we came up with some ideas um, for uh, coming up uh, for what we should use as motors, potentially shell materials and so forth. So let's take a look. So uh, we do need motors. OK, we uh, we decided that we don't need sensors because we really for what we wanted to do, we don't need it. OK. Um, we want to make sure uh, because it would add just it would add cost and complexity, which really we don't want to have for this DIY robot. Now, maybe that's something we add in a future version or future iteration once we go through that engineering design process again. OK, so maybe version two will have some sensors in it. Right. But for now, we want to create a prototype uh, that's easy to build and that can really uh, allow us to, to have some fun with a with a robotic ball. OK. So we, we, we thought about, do we need two motors or four motors? What are the, um, the benefits of having two motors or four motors, motors? If we go to four motors, that means obviously cost is gonna go up, but if we keep it at two, will that be enough motors to do what we need to do? And some of this stuff we'll kind of have to test out in the later phase of uh, the engineering design process. And so um, this is kind of where we're still kind of figuring out some of the things that we can do or add to our robot, all right? So we, again, we decided we wanted a remote, okay? Because if we have a robotic ball, you wanna be able to control it. So we gotta figure out at some point how we get a, get a uh, remote. We don't want sensors. Now there are two different types of motors we can go with, servo motors or hobby, what they call hobby motors, okay? And, and maybe this won't make sense to a lot of you, but a servo motor is actually a motor where you can control more precisely the angle of the um, of the wheel or the motor, where it stops, so forth like that. Hobby motors, you really don't have that fine level of control, but maybe that's good enough for what we need. Uh, that's something we'll kind of have to figure out. And then remember from last session, we were talking about uh, if we uh, we broke down what an actual Sphero robot looks like. I have one, I don't actually have it with me today, but then you could see what actually uh, goes inside of a Sphero robot and you know that we need some wheels that go into, into that, okay? And so, so we're thinking about the machine part of what a robot is, and here are some of the things that we brainstormed. Then we also talked about the shell, okay? So if you're familiar with the Sphero robot, it has a shell. Um, so we imagined what the shell could look like, what types of material, uh, should it be clear, should it be plastic or metal or uh, some other material? Um, should we use actually use a hamster ball? Remember, this is really a prototype uh, robot. 
So we could we go buy go to the pet store and buy a hamster ball and uh, put our electronics and our, our motors and things in that. And would that work? And actually what we found out or what we decided was that it wouldn't work because at least not better than some of the other items that we chose uh, to use for a shell because of the structure of the uh, of the ball. Um, there were too many indentations on it, so we figured it wouldn't create a smooth rolling um, action. And so we moved away from using a hamster ball. Um, what we actually did uh, decide on, and, and I'll show you some of that here in a second, to, uh, to use what they call a craft or an ornament ball. Um, if you've ever seen them, they usually sell them at the hobby store. Um, you can put candy in them or make a, a Christmas ornament out of it. Um, and they come in different sizes. So we figured that um, because they came in different sizes, which would allow us to buy something off the shelf instead of creating something from scratch, um, that it was a good starting point. And then if we needed to change the size because maybe our electronics wouldn't fit in it, it it'd be as simple as stepping up to another uh, size, okay? That was easily purchased from the store. So remember when we're going through this, especially because we want families to be able to do this, uh, schools, after school programs, we wanna make sure that we keep the cost down as low as possible, okay? And so that'll kind of help drive some of the decisions that, we're, that we have to make. Okay, so we have the, the parts and pieces of the machine part. Uh, so we talked about some of the materials, some of the things that we can buy off the shelf, off the shelf meaning that we can just go to the store and buy it already made. Um, and then we talked about uh, the the brains of our robot. What is what what should we use for that? OK, um, I'm familiar with several of the microcontrollers. A microcontroller is really an electronic brain, a chip with sensors, uh, power, things of that nature that actually controls our robot. OK, we're able to program it. But there are different types of microcontrollers that are available. Um, uh, Microbit is one of them. Arduino. Raspberry Pi, these are all considerations. Um, but we actually decided on the micro bit. And, and now that may change. This is something uh, my daughters and I decided on. Now we chose the micro bit because it's very small and, and very powerful at the same time. And because we want to eventually have a remote, a micro bit is um, easily paired with another micro bit to create a remote. And so we figured that from a cost standpoint and from a uh, feature standpoint, the micro bit was really where we wanted, probably want to focus on, okay? It's easy to program, it's a lot smaller, which means we don't have to make our robotic ball as big. And so that's uh, kind of what we settled on. Again, this may change, but at least um, as I start to buy some materials, and you may want to hold off on buying any of these materials until we get to a certain point, um, really, the goal of the Club Project 2020 is for you to learn this whole process and kind of step through it with me and contribute to it in terms of your ideas and things. OK. And then um, once we nail down some of the uh, actual materials that we're going to use, then we'll create a list of materials that you can buy and then you can go out and start to put it together. OK. Um, so if you see here, here's the imagined stage of the engineering design process that we just stepped through. Um, and you can kind of, it's very informal. It's just this piece of paper. You take a pen and you start writing down some of your ideas, um, but it's structured in a way that we can kind of follow along so we can kind of know what we need to go out and buy, right? Um, we're gonna skip this part right here. So, so that's the imagine stage, okay? The imagine stage is pretty straightforward. And it's very informal, just coming up with some ideas on how we can make this possible. And then after the imagine stage, we need to move to the planning stage or the plan stage. OK, so this is where we uh, need to come up with a drawing or a design. What does our product look like? The dimensions, materials, et cetera. OK, so this is actually the what we're going to do in terms of um, uh, deep uh, dive deeper. OK, so your homework, if you will will be to uh, execute on the plan stage. And we'll get to that in a second. But so what is uh, what are some examples of the plan uh, stage of the engineering design process? So here you can see we can do something very simple, like some simple drawings here. And you may not think that's simple, but this is really a chicken coop, a drawing of a chicken coop. But if you see here, 
the details aren't very specific. So it's simple in that way that it doesn't give too many details, right? Um, in terms of like the exact materials, dimensions, they have some, some uh, standard or reference dimensions here. You got a little chicken here for visualization purposes, right? But uh, if you were to just look at this, you couldn't go out and actually build it because it doesn't have enough information. So from that standpoint, it's simple. Or you can, if you want to, and if you, if you have uh, made the decisions, you can get very complex. So this here is a chicken coop as well. Uh, but if you look, these dimensions are already laid out here. You're looking at it in the uh, three different views, uh, top view, side, right side, uh, front view, and then the isometric view over here. These are different types of views. They call it perspective. Um, and then over here, if you want to, you have the bill of materials. I don't know if you can read that, okay? And then they, in the bill of materials, they list everything you need to actually develop this. So it's our actually our goal that after we go through this engineering design process and we figure out all of, all of these things on how to build a, a spheroid robot, that we um, come back and maybe are able to print out or create a complex uh, schematic or blueprint like this so that others who come along um, can benefit from the work that we're doing right now in developing this uh, DIY Sphero ball, okay? So, um, but for right now, we probably wanna stick to the simple version of drawing and design and planning for um, our Sphero robot, which we need to come up with a name for. Um, so, um, but this is the plan stage of it, okay? Um, and this is what we're gonna actually work on between this session and the next session. So what's the dive deeper portion, okay? So, and I'll put these, the dive deepers will actually go on the website in the class. If you haven't enrolled already, um, you have to enroll on the Club Project 2020 class on Club Oasis. And then you'll be able to jump into that and get all of these assignments. Um, and I do that with air quotes because uh, really it's just, um, if you want to go ahead and do it, you can do it. I recommend them because it, then you can have a, a more deeper experience. Um, so your dive deeper assignment is to enroll in the class if you haven't already. Um, and then I want you to create a Tinkercad account. Okay, so Tinkercad is actually a, a, a CAD program. CAD is an acronym standing for Computer aided drafting okay so tinkercad is really designed for young learners to come up to speed on 3d modeling um you can uh it's like a precursor to actually getting something 3d printed um, but what we're going to do and i'll show you here my account on tinkercad in a second we're going to actually go into tinkercad and uh once we start to decide on what pieces we want we can start to create an actual 3d model of our ball okay and these things are all come in handy as again, when someone wants to replicate what we're doing right now. Um, so uh, if you wanna if you want to join, or create a Tinkercad account and join the class, you have to let me know um, on Club Oasis and then I'll give you the instructions um, so that um, you can request entry into our Tinkercad class, okay? And then when you're in the class, I'll be able to jump into any uh, 3D models that you create and help you out and create, um, uh, help you get through some of the, uh, the exercises if you're stuck, okay? So it kind of gives me a teacher level access to your Tinkercad account. Um, and then when you're in there, if you look around, I want you to complete a few of the tutorials, okay? They have some pretty good tutorials that'll walk you through step-by-step step how to use Tinkercad. And uh, actually in the next Club Project 2020 session, uh, we're actually going to do some some Tinkercad, some live Tinkercad uh, instruction so that you know how to use and get around on Tinkercad, which will be a tool that we're going to use in Club Project 2020. OK, so the goal too of Club Project 2020 is to make sure that um, you have one second. Another goal of Club Project 2020 is to make sure that you have the skills and the tools to actually do some of this stuff on your own at some point. And so as we come across um, different obstacles or opportunities uh, to learn about programming or about 3D modeling, um, about mechanical assembly, we're going to do that. OK, and that's 
another reason why it takes uh, an entire year, because as we go through this project, whatever we need to learn to complete these different steps, we're going to learn. OK, so that's the uh, other benefit of being a part of Club Project 2020. Um, so just real briefly, I wanted to show you um, here's my Tinkercad account. So I actually started to go through and actually create. Um, I don't know if you can see that uh, one second here. There we go. Um, so here's uh, my design I started working with. As you can see, this here is a micro bit in here. I actually have a, a clear sphere, right? So if we're imagining our robotic ball, I'll move that out the way. Um, I have the micro bit, which is gonna be our brains. That's modeled in here already, okay? That's another reason why I like Tinkercad. They have a lot of these components already developed. I have a battery in here, which we'll need. And so as we actually go through and start to design and build out our robotic ball, we can model it in 3D um, in Tinkercad here. And so when we want to go and actually um, test out maybe if some of these parts or pieces will fit, we can do that in here before we actually bought any of that if we wanted to. And then this gives us a great visual representation of, uh, of what our uh, final product will possibly look like. And I've actually made started to make some some Lego pieces here because I think, and this is something that I've been thinking about um, as uh, I was stepping through uh, the Imagine stage is that we actually need something to actually hold our micro bit here in the center of our sphere. And from the, I, I'm thinking that we're gonna use some sort of Lego. It may be the Lego bricks or some sort of Technic, Lego Technic pieces to create a frame to hold all of our electronics and our wheels that we'll have on the ball inside of our robotic ball here, okay? Um, and again, that's because it's low cost, it's readily available, um, and it's, uh, you know, most kids know how to work with uh, Legos. So well, that's one of the reasons, okay? So um, finally, I wanted to show you, uh, so I actually went out and started to purchase some of these pieces um, just for my own sake, um, start to tinker around with uh, what works, what doesn't work. Um, so actually I already had a micro bit. So here's a micro bit, what it looks like in real life, okay? So you can see it has the little LED array here in the front. Um, let me see if I turn it on if it has any. So you can see that LED comes on. I don't think I have it programmed for anything else. Yeah, but you can get a good look at it. On the back here, there's a power pack. And then this little board here is called a, a motor driver, okay? So the, the micro bit doesn't have enough power to actually run motors by itself. So you usually need some sort of a expansion board to attach it to. Um, and it, it gives you more power as well. So that's that. This will be the brains of our uh, robot. I got some Lego pieces here that I've just been kind of um, measuring to see if they would fit on here as kind of like a frame. I'm thinking about some different things. Um, here are the servo motors that I had talked about. Here, So here's an example of what they look like. Um, you see they're just little, little motors uh, and these turn here and that's based on whatever you program it to. And these actually plug into uh, our micro bit here. Okay. So you can start to see, and we've got to figure out a way to, how do we mount these in here? And then, uh, so you see the challenge there, trying to figure out how to make all of this stuff work. And then here's the, the little ornament ball that I talked about, okay? So these are, like I said, these are almost perfect for what we're trying to do. These come in several different sizes, as you can see. Only thing here, it has this like little plastic stem where if you were using it for what it's intended to be used for, you would kind of put some string or, or uh, uh, some tape through there to kind of hold the ball. But we're just gonna be able to cut that off. It's very thin plastic and maybe file it down, give it a little bit more smoothness. And then as you can see this actually, so you can start to see how it's able to roll. Okay. So now you can imagine if once we have our electronics, our motor and everything in here, 
how that's uh, going to allow that to happen. And so you can start to see, and I'm just going to stuff this in here just so you can kind of see. Now we have to figure out how this is all going to fit in here so that it, it, it doesn't move around too, too wildly. But it all fits in here. This is actually a hundred millimeter uh, diameter. They have different diameters, but I found that this one, uh, I bought a couple, is, is a great size. It still gives us enough room to put some Legos and wheels and other parts and pieces in here. So, but again, that may change, okay? And this is all part of the whole process. Uh, whatever we decide on may change and it may require us to purchase a couple pieces to test, see how everything fits together. But you can start to see now how this starts to, to become a robotic ball, like a, like a spheral, okay? So here, actually, if you've never seen the spheral, I don't have this one with me, but you can see the BB-8 here. And so now you start to see how our robotic ball is going to be almost exactly like theirs, but we won't have the outside skin, which you may be at. You may want to put that on yours or something similar. You may be able to color it or paint it. So really, the sky's the limit once you start to create something custom. So, um, so that's that's really it for today. Okay. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, remember to log on to the class, the actual class on Club Oasis. Um, sign up into the class. If you want to join the Tinkercad class, let me know there. Uh, we can communicate through Club Oasis. Um, and then you can kind of help us uh, go through this actual design process. Like I said, all of these classes will be available. Uh, you, <laughs> Okay, in one second, somebody said that they had a name for it. So these classes will be available online after the fact. And the whole goal is after we go through this and we actually make a working robot, that people will be able to come along and follow along uh, with everything that we've designed together and build their own robotic ball. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so I think that's King. So what what do you have? What name do you have for it? Because Zora Mona, <laughs> Agent Robo Ball 22. Okay, that's a long name, but maybe we could do that. <laughs> so I think uh, Zora had come. I forget. Zora said Robo Ball. Uh, Robo ball. Yep. And Mona, I think for some reason she wanted to call it marble. So, yep, marble. <laughs> so we'll figure that out. Maybe we'll have a vote uh, once we actually build it, complete our build and see uh, what what name we want to call it. OK, uh, but all of those are great names. So but thanks for joining me for Club Project 2020 Session 2, uh, the Imagine. Um, Hopefully, again, take a look at the Dive Deeper. Join our Tinkercad class as well. And, uh, and any questions or comments you have, leave them in the class. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can, okay? Other than that, I'll see you in the next session. Take care. Hey.